Last year, we went on a mini bike trip. This year, we wanted to carry on the tradition. I stumbled across a random Facebook event called the Michigan Smokin' Minis Fire Fest. We only knew three things about the event that it was in Sturgis, Michigan, that there were mini bikes there, and that we had to be there. We thought it would be the perfect opportunity to take our first venture into the mini bike community. Pretty solid. Maybe just one more for posterity. Go! I stare into space and hope we're not alone Am I searching for something that's better than home? I've been working so hard Stress is tremendous and pressure is endless No one on this planet like me to be friends with I've been working so hard No, it's right here. It's right here. Okay. Rouch off road. This little shack says that it's open. Okay, well, we can ask about camping. Yes. All right, have fun. Thank you. Have a good one. When we rolled up to the campsite, it was it was pitch black. Okay, and that's that's kind of one of my favorite things about when you when you pull up somewhere new. If it's if it's nighttime, if it's pitch black, you have no idea where you are, and I think that's that's fun because the next morning you get to wake up without a clue in the world where you are, and you get to explore. Wait, are these rigs approaching? Yes. Oh my god! Bro, I don't have a light on mine. I don't have a light on mine right, either. Turn, turn, right, go, right, turn right, bud. Go turn right. Oh yeah. Dude, should we go on a rip? You guys want to go on a late night? I have no yeah. lights. I have a headlamp. You have a headlamp, have headlamp, but there's four of us. Okay, you see these grass mounds that people are on? Yeah, we should, we find, should find one, one of those. those. Yeah, I agree. Nope. Oh, right there, that's us. Yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good with me. After our three hour drive, we backed up the truck and began to unpack. Yeah. Oh, you're pitching a tent, Jacob, huh? Oh, yeah, but... You're just happy to see me, or what? Oh, I think I'm just happy to see you. Oh, yeah. So, you're saying there's no possible way that I can have something to lay on? No, no, just take just take the air mattress, lay it out. I'm going to blow it up with my mouth. Just tell me what. Oh, shit. What the heck? <laughs> Thank you. Corey 
my tent is the same brand as my mini bike. It is! Did you blow that up by mouth? <laughs> With our camp established, we are free to start ripping. <laughs> First rip, I can't do. Camera's it. What the hell? I'm stuck in my face. All right, buddy. All right, you're good to go, brother. All right. Don't lose me. So Callum's going out for his t first test rip. He's the first one venturing out into the trails. That's what we can hear right now. Oh, he's coming around. How was it, brother? It's muddy. That's crazy out there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. Dude, every one of our rig first fires on first pull, baby. Okay, we'll readjust. First and hopefully last crash. After the excitement of our first rip, Corey made a grave realization. Owen, where the f is my tent? I threw a big tent in here. I don't know. All we got is that little blue one. What do you mean that little blue one? That's all we got left. What do you mean? We got these and that little blue one. I packed a big tent. You mean this? Just set it up. Where's my see. tent? Where's my know. tent? Like, you I packed that. That's your tent. This, I did not pack this. Okay, so I don't understand how any of this works. I had thought that I packed myself a normal tent. I mean, um, you know, one that was as large and magnificent as both the ones that you and Owen and Callum like, had. I, I but don't I was actually presented with an A-frame tent that was about 50 years old. And when you think about an A-frame tent, you think about a very sharp triangle, but mine was like bloated on the sides of it. I don't think I pulled it tight enough. Oh! No! 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 <laughs> Here you watch a man desperately try to set up his tent. Why is it dark? No, no, it just broke. All right, last one, last rope. It's looking great. Is this even, am I gonna even be able to get into it? I think that's as good as it gets. <laughs> All right, where's the zip? The whole bottom, wait, wait, yo! you for taking away my tent but nobody took away your tent you got a tent look at this thing F you look at this thing bro. this thing is like 50 years old and it sleeps like 0 0.75 people so once our colleague overcame his shelter challenges we began to pack it in for the night at least that's what the others thought
Well, disposing of the evidence. Time for some well-deserved sleep. <laughs> I didn't sleep for shit. I didn't sleep at all. So I was like basically already awake when I heard mini bike engines start to fire up. So I emerged from the tent. It m couldn't have been like seven o'clock. Th I think it was right on the dot seven. I opened my tent and everything was covered in so much water, so much water. And it had not rained. It was all dew because the humidity was so high. It was 95% humidity. Dude, surprisingly little amount of water spray. What up, man? What up? It's, it's pink. Oh, yeah? When I woke up, it was, I was feeling pretty good, well rested. So I have to get out of my tent, get some fresh air, see if any of the boys are up. And so I'm going to check on the bikes, maybe, maybe start them up, get the dew off of them. And I take a look, and mine's pink! It was pinkinated, and not only that, there was sparkles and tassels and such put on it in a pretty little basket. I'd be mad if it wasn't so darn cute. Nice. <laughs> you like it? It looks good. Thanks. <laughs> go take a tour. Dude, this is utilitarian now. Yeah. The mud and, and wow. <laughs> Wait. It worked. <laughs> what a name. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sleepy. Hey. Let's go. Oh, the safety briefing. Yes. <laughs> now we went over a whole lot of safety during that briefing. Okay, we rushed on down there. We all we all got, got geared up, hopped on the bikes, rushed down over there the moment it was starting. All right, you ready for the safety meeting? Yep. You ready for the safety meeting? Yes, sir. You ready for the safety meeting? Let's get muddy.
I'm on my bike. To be honest, the first time I've ridden it on something that's not paved concrete. And and I'm kind of having this thought through my head that's like, I, I have one and a half to three times the mass of the bike that's under me. I, I have more displacement. In other words, this thing's really small and, and with really any speed at all on an uneven surface, it kind of just started bouncing around. There was nobody there yet. So we wait maybe 15, 20 minutes. And he explained to us the rules, which are go in the cones. There wasn't much talk about practicing safety. They just said, all right, we're gonna go out there, don't go on anything that doesn't have the yellow tape on it, and we're gonna light some shit on fire later. This race is only as good as however much gas and diesel we get. So everybody should go get five gallons of gas and diesel, and what we do is we're gonna line that course with gas and diesel and light it, and you run it with fire on both sides. We've never done that before, but it sounds cool, so. <laughs> it should be cool. They literally said, that ATVs and cars will be on the courses we'll be riding on, so watch out, stay within the, the yellow marked lines. There's gonna be all, there's a class for everything. There's gonna be people in side by side, there's gonna be cheap trucks, everything is gonna run these courses. So that's my kind of safety briefing. If it wasn't safety that was on the front of your mind during the driver's meeting, what did take your attention when you first met up with all the rest of the mini bikers. Some of the units out there, there are some unique creations out there. Every single person, every bike, everything that happened and showed up blew my mind over and over again. Oh my God, there was this like turbo diesel thing. It was this, this diesel, was it a Briggs or something? And it had a freaking turbo slapped on it. Uh, now the turbo wasn't really doing much other than, you know, smoking and making noise, but that's all it's got to do, right? It's a diesel mini bike. This is a turbo diesel Coleman CT200. Okay. Uh, we got some frame spacers in there. Yeah. Because you see how close that valve cover was up there. It does nothing. <laughs> well. But it smokes a lot. It's there. Somebody's behind me and they're kind of yeah. catching up. I'll just pull the throttle all the way and it smokes You can out. roll coal. Yeah. Roll coal and um, make a smoke screen, like white smoke. <laughs> I put, when I did the turbo, I put a 10 horsepower pump and injector on. Okay. On a 5 horsepower motor. Yeah. It's way too much fuel. So I just dumped yeah. it out the back. After a certain amount of throttle, it'll slow down. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. Like we make mini bikes, we you know we we build these engines, we we do some minor work on these frames. These guys were cobbling together usable vehicles that you know I'd say in hindsight survived the days pretty well. But I would say what stood out to me was the fact that most of these bikes were cobbled together with things that you wouldn't expect. Pops wheelies, second gear spins tires, and third gear gets traction. It was a lawnmower at one point. Yeah. Uh, and then we found a Polaris two-wheel drive front end. Yeah. And got bored, put them both together, swapped out some pulleys. Uh, Is that part of a power a wheel body or something? cage in here. Yeah. It's up and around. Hell yeah. Upper and lower. It actually has a full power wheels body. Awesome. Uh, started watching the grindhouse videos yeah. on YouTube yeah. and I was like why not but let's do it yeah so yeah this is where it's at so far by the end of that driver's meeting I was I was on the bike I was itching to ride I think I was one of the first in line I wanted to go I was I was itching to move I was I was getting ready I was revving it up I was getting freaking rowdy I I had barely gotten any sleep from the night before. I was running off an egg McMuffin and all I wanted to do was ride. And we went out there and we just were thrown into the thick of it. There's bikes everywhere like just freaking lawnmower engine, lawnmower engine going past you. And then 
all of a sudden I see Jacob just and then crash in the mud pile and then immediately topple over. I get down the hill, wildly out of control, start to make the right turn and just dive into the dirt, I'd say. It's like I was trying to give the earth a big old hug. As soon as we got out there, I realized that I had all the horsepower I needed for these trails, but I did not have the suspension, the tires, and last but not least, the rider skill. So we were out there doing the best we could, fighting for our lives, and there were some serious operators out there with fine-tuned machinery that were just, they were blowing our doors off. But once we got into the section of like, I don't even know what this was, it, but it was like big berm after big berm after big berm. And that was like a euphoric feeling. Calum and I loved that. We did that like 600 times that section. Yeah, those first rides, and we got to see the trails that we were going to be ripping on. That was exciting, okay. There was some fun pathways. The first one was pretty mild. It was the shortest one. It was good, a couple obstacles here and there. We go up, we go down, we go around. There's some trees, there's some swamps. It's good, it's great, it's a nice little track. But the next one, oh, it got bigger. Everything got bigger. The hills got bigger, the turns got bigger, the trees got bigger. But the last one, the last one was set up. It wasn't just through the woods like the last two, no. This one was built by tractors and diggers and earth movers, okay? They had a big box on top of a pile of dirt. That's some people would call it a shipping container. And around that shipping container was ramps and banks and loop-de-loops and that by the end of it, you're going around under the shipping container, up and around and through the hoe and you jump out the end of it. That was a that was fun. Guys. We just got back from our first run. That was good. That was yeah. good. We got some repairs to make. We got some repairs to make, but <laughs> Jacob is already fully in it. My bike is also fully in it. And then look at these beautiful units right here. Oh my God. All right, so Callum, how many times did you throw your chain? Four or five. How and many times? And, and you launched your belt? Yeah. My bike was not enjoying these trails as much as I was, per se. Um, while I had built the mini bike to have fun on these sorts of trails, uh, I had not done much testing. And the result of that was some issues on the trail. I went through probably three belts. I shot them off into the woods probably five times at like 20, 30 miles an hour. No! Swung it off! Uh, punched myself in the face with one of the belts. Oh wait, I have another belt. Hang on. Ugh. Ow, oh, I just punched myself in the face with that. Um, dropped the chain probably 25 times at least. I had like no tires left. The front one was on backwards. There, there, was, there was a couple issues with the bike, but I, I mean, it was the ground was loose enough to where, where I could still have some fun. And I think, I think I did just that. All right, we did a shakedown. We shake everything loose. We fixed some things, we think. So we'll try again. Let's go try again. I volunteered first to set a timed lap. Owen's first run. How do you think you're gonna do, buddy? Look what's behind you.
How'd you do? I just took a beating, bro. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. And then <laughs> the others decided to have a go. Okay. All right, you ready for your run? Let's go, brother. <laughs> Probably the worst lap I've ever done. This thing is a goddamn really nightmare. I went out, okay. bro. I don't think they're getting laps from this circuit because the timekeeper's not over here. No, that's what he said to me last time. Exhausted from our race attempts, we went back to camp to recharge and refuel. All right, for lunch, we got warm hot dogs cooked on this surface. Tell us about your time trials. As I previously stated, the mini bike was not having a great time on these trails, so. Whenever I tried to do a, a, a time trial, the bike didn't really agree, okay? I could put down as good of a start as I want, but I could never finish really a full time trial. Except for maybe one or two laps, but unfortunately I was not the only one um, failing to go around the lap. The people who were supposed to be timing the laps were also failing to time the laps. So after about three, time laps where a couple of times my bike broke and the rest of them they just didn't time me i gave up dog juice on the ground oh shit. only a little bit in my sock this this is glamping the modern campfire is you hear that sizzle you hear that sizzle now we're cooking with gas so after lunch we didn't really have any desire to go back out onto the main trails where people were setting lap times because we they were saying that we could set lap times, but then we realized that the the recording of times was not as accurate as we had hoped. I don't want one of those. Why? Yes, you do. Why? Why? And also, there were massive side by sides and full on commuter vehicles on these trails, and it it felt like we were gonna die. How I feel about hot dogs in general? Yeah. Oh, I'm a weenie fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of wieners. What do you like to put on your hot dogs? Well, personally, I like mustard, ketchup, relish, whatever. But we got nothing. Today we got nothing. But today we're just raw dogs and the dogs? Yes. Rude. He won't eat our fing hot dogs. He uh, won't. Yeah, That's about it. It felt like we were going to get run over. And also, these big trails were beating the absolute shit out of our bikes and our bodies. So we said, why don't we just go do our own thing? Why don't we go explore? There's this whole off road park we have to ourselves. So that's what we did. As a group, we set off 
on these trails and we started to explore. Mr. Disrespectful here decided to cash in on lunch when it, when it didn't work out for you, huh? Hot dog. Oh, it was delicious. Thank you for the hot dog. This is where the sun and I both came into our own. I think the afternoon I had developed like the comfort with my bike to know exactly what it was gonna do and what it wasn't gonna do, and I was sturdy on it. I knew exactly how to ride it without like feeling stressed out. And yeah, at points I did kind of fall behind everyone else, but like I was pretty much walking up every hill, so like, I, I mean, you gotta cut me some slack somewhere. During our explorations, we came across a couple of fun little jumps and rivers and valleys and stuff, but we found one that was basically like just straight uphill, okay? Like this at the top as well, maybe a little bit roundy, but it was loose sand. Yeah, like on camera, it doesn't do it justice at all, but I hit it, Callum hit it, and then Corey hit it, and the bike got stuck. So this is the type of deal where you need the momentum. You cannot stop or else you're getting stuck, especially with our less than ideal tire setups. We probably spent like an hour there because I couldn't stop freaking sending my bike over each side over and over again. It was a blast. Out on the exploration on those trails, like, I just had so much fun. All of like the loose terrain we found where it's like loose rocks and stuff. I had a great time and just kind of flying through the rough of it was so cool. Honestly, I am nothing but impressed by what Jacob managed to do with that bike. I I gave that thing a, I gave it a go and you know, obviously we're messing with Jacob. We're like, come on bro, keep up. And I tried to ride that thing. I barely made it like 25 feet. Jacob, I have so much respect for you. How were you riding? <laughs> How are you doing this? That's how, what he did in Wisconsin. He's a operator. How is he doing this? All right. We just got back from our best rippage session yet. That was pretty good. We're finishing off strong, I think. Yeah, I'd say I so. I would say so. Absolutely. Status report. Status reported. Earlier in the day, we had heard about the fire race. And I wanted to stay for that fire race so badly. But I don't think as a group we could sustain another night camping in 95% humidity with no food, no drinks, not a lot of willpower left. So we missed the fire race. That was a drastic error in hindsight. We should have toughed it out. But in the moment, the right thing to do was to get home. But next time, next time we're racing surrounded by fire. I think we learned that this thing's fucking awesome. We learned that we're really good mini bike builders. I learned I am not. I learned we're all really good at crashing. There's something special about eating mud puddle. Yeah. It's yeah, fun. It was it's fun. part of the experience. Look yeah. at my feet. I jumped over that hill probably four times, and every time I landed the bike on its side. <laughs> we went into this knowing nothing. About literally, nothing. literally nothing. Yeah. And I'd say it was quite a success. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It was what really stuck with me was how impressed I was that Jacob and Corey made it through some of the terrain that we were riding on, especially with Corey's. A limited riding experience in this type of terrain, limited mini bike riding experience to begin with, and then Jacob's lack of a platform. 
This dude's on a 100cc Coleman meant for a five-year-old with a 212 in between it and just I rode that thing and I told him, I'm like, Jacob, I have so much respect for you now. I don't know how you're riding this thing. Two seconds on it and it was like, it, the thing was a bone shaker. I've been riding mini bikes for about a year and a half, ever since Owen and Callum convinced me to buy my first frame. And they always would talk about, you know, riding off road and that's something I would never even consider. I'm like, I have no interest in that. I got here, we went on our first run, the first, like, 60 feet. Jacob wipes out right in front of Owen, who's in front of me. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> what? I'm in survival mode. I'm like, I have this accelerator here, I have this brake here and here, and it's like, survive, survive, S stay on the throttle, carry speed through these things. And I think that was the only thing that was able to get me through that first run. Looking back on it, I can't wait to go do it again, but like, wow, that was the, quite the shove. That was quite the first experience off-roading on a mini bike. I mean, I used to go camping a lot, like as a kid with my family. And honestly, it made me remember how much fun it is. It made me remember that I do like the outside. As much as I hate bugs, I love the wilderness and I love the outdoors. And going back there as a more grown-up child with my big grown-up toys is so much fun. Um, so what I'm taking away from this is that I want to go spend more time outdoors and off-road, whether that be in a truck or mini bikes or dirt bikes or whatever. I think we should go outdoors and have some fun. I think what we caught a glimpse of is, is this very interesting and very cool kind of like rural American ingenuity where you just kind of look at what's around you, you take stock, and then you make the coolest, most unique thing you can possibly make out of it. And then you go and try to rip it with all your buddies. So it was just this kind of cool culmination of how we like to approach projects and how we like to think of what we're doing and, and, and then this community that's so different from from where we live and the circles we interact with but also is like so enamored with the idea of just getting around and making something cool. Rejected content.